So highlight, America declares war. Highlight, December 8th. This is December 8th, 1941. President Roosevelt formally asked Congress for a declaration of war and highlight these words, a date which will live in infamy. That's a very famous speech given by Roosevelt and the United States now officially joined the war. Turning to page 388, highlights the European theater, 1942 to 1945. Highlight the battle for Africa and the Mediterranean. Highlight a bleak 1942. Now it's just not a good time for the Allies. Highlight German submarines infested the Atlantic. Highlight that they sank more than 6,266,000 tons of vital war materials. Highlight mid-1943, and then highlight uh, win the Battle of the Atlantic for the Americans and British. So it took up to that point for them to uh, conquer the Atlantic. Highlight summer of 1942, a British-Canadian force attempted a full-scale raid at the French port of Dieppe that was repulsed by the Germans. So mostly failures at this point. Highlight El Alamein and Operation Torch. Highlight General Bernard Montgomery. He launched an attack against the Africa Corps. Highlight at El Alamein. He inflicted 59,000 casualties on the Germans and forced them back. Highlight November 1942 highlight Operation Torch, and highlight this was an invasion of Vichy French, Northwest Africa. Highlight Dwight D. Eisenhower and George S. Patton. They were the American generals and leaders, uh, leaders here. Operation Torch began when Anglo-American forces landed at, highlight uh, Casablanca, Oran, and Algiers. Highlight the Axis-dominated French forces surrendered within a week. So this was a huge, huge push here. And it was encouraging that the French, um, that they surrendered so easily. It proved that they were not so much on the side of the Germans, that they were still on their own side, and that they were going to respond to the Allies. Highlight the Nazis were forced to surrender Tunisia in May 1943. So now North Africa was secured and the Allies could prepare to invade Europe and they chose what they called the weak underbelly or Churchill called, um, called this the weak underbelly of the Axis powers and this was Italy. Remember that Mussolini uh, was not the leader that Hitler was. The Italians were not as disciplined and as well prepared for war as the Germans were. And Hitler had already had to bail Mussolini out a few times. So highlight the conquest of Sicily. Highlights that forces on Sicily were unprepared for a complete Allied invasion. Highlight the 100,000 Axis troops. These were evacuated to the mainland just before the Allied victory. Highlight that the Italians feared war and they forced Mussolini and his government to resign on July 25th. And then highlight that Italy formally surrendered to the Allies on September 18th, 1943, and turned against her Axis partners. Highlight the Italian campaign. Highlight the Germans in Italy refused to leave. They did not want to give up any bit of ground they had gained. Highlight the British Eighth Army and the American Fifth Army. And then turn to page 390, highlight that they captured Rome in May. Highlight June 4th, 1944. Highlight winter of 1944. Highlight April 1945, the war in Italy was over. So it took some time, it took close to two full years to completely conquer Italy, even after her surrender, but she was finally conquered. 
right? Page 390, let's keep going. Highlight disaster in Russia. Highlight the last German offensive. Highlight the Nazis and the Soviets on the Eastern Front. And this was the most savage fighting of the war, most likely. Highlight May 1942. They captured Crimea and pushed into the Caucasus to seize its vital oil fields. So highlight Crimea and the Caucasus to seize oil fields. And really, if, if the armies hadn't detoured in order to get those oil fields, they might have been a lot more successful in the Soviet Union than they were. But this is the choice that Hitler made, and it was a big mistake for him. Uh, highlight Stalingrad. Highlight that the Russians surrounded the German 6th Army, and that they pinned them in the city for almost two months. Hitler had ordered his troops to fight to the last man, but finally, the uh, survivors who were left highlight that they surrendered in January 1943. And highlight the last offensive in the East had been crushed. Um, highlight by the end of 1944, the Russians had recaptured all their own territory and stormed into Eastern Europe. Highlight these areas that they occupied. They occupied Finland, the Baltic states, Romania, Bulgaria, and Poland. And then highlight uh, Central Europe and captured Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Austria, and even Germany. Let's look at the beginning of the end. Highlight D-Day. Highlight the Greatest Armada. Highlight that it was assembled in southern England along the English Channel. Highlight, top of the next column, General Eisenhower was chosen as Supreme Allied Commander of the Invasion, and that the Nazis had strongly fortified the coast of France. Churchill referred to it as uh, Hitler's Fortress Europe, and it had to be breached in order to win the war. Highlight, June 6, 1944, was D-Day. Make sure you know that date. Highlight that thousands of American, British, Canadian, and free French troops hit the beaches of Normandy. And highlight this was the largest amphibious or seaborne assault in history. Nothing had ever been seen like this before. Nothing has ever been seen like this since. Okay, um, on page 391, highlight the Battle of the Bulge, uh, bottom of the paragraph about the Bulge. Highlight that the Battle of the Bulge was the Nazis' last great offensive in the West. And then the last thing to highlight, um, highlight May 8th, 1945, was declared VE Day, or Victory in Europe Day. And this was the final collapse of the German offensive. Let's turn back to page 389. A few things to highlight about our Nisei, the Japanese American soldiers here. Uh, so probably, probably one of the most unfortunate parts of American history was right after, um, right after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, um, there was a widespread fear in the states that Japanese Americans were going to um, fight with Japan rather than fight with America. Uh, so especially those who had been born in Japan and emigrated to the United States, they very much feared those, even people who had been born in the states but happened to have a, a Japanese ancestry. So many of them, uh, mostly on the West Coast, were arrested and sent to uh, detention camps. So uh, highlight that all Japanese Americans living in the Western United States were relocated to detention camps. And highlight the, um, highlight the title of the section too, the Nisei Japanese American Soldiers. Uh, businesses and homes uh, and even uh, items that belonged to them that they couldn't take with them uh, they were either sold or just left behind to just sit. And sadly, uh, many of them were forced to uh, sell goods 
for much less than their actual value. And um, the ironic thing here is that even as these people were being held, and they, they had taken the people in the western states because uh, they were closest to Japan. So they figured, oh well, the people living on the east coast, they're far away from Japan, uh, there's no way that they can, you know, they can't direct the Japanese to attacks there because, you know, it's, it's too far from Japan. So it's just the thinking. Um, but as the war progressed, they, they needed more soldiers, so they turned to the young Japanese men in the detention camps, and they were given the opportunity to serve in the armed forces. Now you would think they'd been arrested by their own country, they'd been treated like war criminals when most of them were anything but. You'd think that they would refuse to serve, but that was not the case. These men, uh, these young men were very special and very, very courageous. And many of them, they chose to fight. They still loved their country in spite of what it had done to them. And they wanted to prove their loyalty by fighting. So highlight that these Japanese American soldiers were known as Nisei. And this means second generation. Uh, these were all sons of Japanese immigrants. They were born and educated in the States. Highlight that during the war, the Nisei displayed unflinching devotion, patriotism, and courage. They served with valor. Pilot, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team was the most decorated infantry unit in all of the United States Army. And these were young men whose families were still back in detention camps. Their freedoms had been stripped away, and yet they were the most courageous and most decorated unit of the entire army highlight that they were given 10 unit citations, so that means recommendations for the entire unit, and 3,915 individual awards. Uh, highlight that the uh, 442nd, the 100th Battalion, was nicknamed the Purple Heart Battalion because almost every single member had earned one or even more Purple Heart medals for being wounded in battle. So they played an extremely important role. Um, they were only allowed to fight in Europe because they were still afraid that if they fought in Asia that they'd uh, go over to the Japanese side. So still questioning their loyalty even after they had chosen to fight. Um, but they served with unquestionable loyalty and they, they kind of helped to, uh, to smooth the way there to fixing uh, those relations. So that is the end of this section. We'll keep going with the rest of the war uh, throughout the week. So you guys have a great rest of your day.